Hey everybody and welcome to another Learn to Digitize video. I am Sue and I'm coming at you from OML Embroidery and OML Digitizing and welcome to class number three. Class number three is organization and connections and these are two very important things that you need to do with each and every design that you create. It's very important to do on each design and I'm going to show you why. Um, we have a lot of people that ask us about, you know, this doesn't work, this embroidery de design doesn't work, can you look at it? Yes, okay, I'll look at it, and most of the time I can figure it out. Sometimes, though, I notice a lot of people are sending des designs, and there's like 150, believe it or not, 150 thread changes, and they stitched it out that way, and it's because they didn't optimize their design and that one took me about an hour and a half to optimize it and then I could see what's going on and then I could figure out what's going on so that's a lot of work for me to do I, I spent a lot of time where I really didn't need to but I wasn't able to give the help because I couldn't see through the mess now I'm meticulous about organizing stuff you don't have to be quite as meticulous as I am but if you like to do a whole bunch of thread changes, then go ahead, I guess. So the other, the second thing we're going to talk about is uh, making connections. We want to avoid uh, jump stitches as much as possible. Now, it's not even remotely possible to get them all, but you need to do as much, as many as you can. So a lot of times, depending on how you digitize, I suppose, um, if you digitize like I do, I plan everything out and I do, I make my connections as I'm digitizing. So what I mean by connections is connecting one color to another. Um, when you put it in order, you want to order, you know, all the reds, all the blacks, all the greens, as much as possible. Obviously, some things have to stitch out first and some things have to stitch out last. But I will digitize, say, a fill stitch and then I will manually do a run stitch next to the other one. But that's how I digitize. Not everybody is that way. Um, um, my f internet friend, actually, I should say that, this uh, video is dedicated to my internet friend, Suzanne, who was having trouble understanding the concept of connections. And it's very hard to explain in an email or a PM exactly what it is. So I said, look, I'll show you how to do it. And, it, you know, it'll help your embroidery and, and it definitely helps your stitch out. So some of the rules, the rules, I'm holding my hands up in quotes that we make for doing embroidery is you before you send it to your machine or before you take it out of studio, you check the 3D, make sure everything looks good, back and forth, I do that a lot. You check out your density map to see if you have any problems, that'll save you a lot of time in stitching out. And x-ray if you think that's necessary. I just tend to do density map, which are down here at the bottom, by the way, towards the left side. And then check your stitch simulator. So we're gonna add to that list and say make sure your designs are optimized so included in that optimization is uh, not having as many um, thread color changes because let's face it who really wants to and eliminate as many jump stitches as you can so moving on let's bring up a design and i'm going to digitize a little bit and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. So we are in studio, of course, because that's where all the fun happens. And we are going to do the usual. We are going to bring in an image and we're going to start working on it. So let's go up here to image, import, and I don't have it on my desk. Okay, so we're going to have to go in here and edit. So here I brought in my image and another rule that we want to digitize by is that you want to digitize at approximately the size you want your finished design to be. And I can't really tell what this is going to be, so let's check it out. Let's go to image, let's go to edit image window, and this is where you can go and make all your changes. So you know if you need to angle it a little bit, that's fine. 4x4, four four, hey, that's just about right. So that's going to work for me, So, but if you wanted to change it, you just change these numbers here. 
um, and that's fine. If you need to crop, you can do that too. So let's apply and it's going to stay the same way. So when we're looking at this design, we want to do what's in the background first and then the foreground. So I'm going to say these bones are in the back. I don't think I want such a thick outline, but we're going to deal with that later. So let's go to closed path and we are just going to start digitizing these bones and I'm going to show you two ways of doing these guys. It was a quick tip YouTube video, but I'll show you. See now I put that one too far. I can't quite get my curve. So we're going to move it up and fix our curve a little bit. I'm not going for perfection. I don't think you guys need to see me move nodes all around. I'm going to get it pretty good. And it's hard for me because I have to slow down a little bit. So I'm just going to do the best I can. And I have a new mouse, by the way. If you notice, no loud clicking. And I have much better control. Just saying. Thanks, Don. Okay, so bend up there. And it's a closed path. So this is our last node. We want to bring it up there and make it match. So there we go. I don't want it blue. We're going to do some weird things, okay? We're just doing stuff to show you. Now, in in when you're digitizing, you can take this, duplicate it, and rotate it to fit in. And that's what I would do for each of these things. But for demonstration purposes, I'm going to digitize each one separately. Um, to me, they look exactly the same. They're just on different angles. So that will save you a lot of time when you're working. If you see something that looks the same, just duplicate it, change it around, and it'll fit properly. But for what we're doing this is how we're going to do and if you notice when i'm digitizing along i basically start and end in the same spot i always seem to pick the same thing so i'll do the next one differently so we want this one white that's not going to show up very well it kind of does okay moving on because we're not duplicating stuff let's do here and i did an opposite usually i start at the same point and we'll here and here we're just going quickly remember you guys take your time there and we'll kind of get this curve in here and we're going to do it here and there well we can fix that that'll drive me nuts there we go and then we go generate and that one's white um why don't we make it just kind of opposite looking maybe yeah, that'll probably give a great example. So for this last one, let's do it just a little bit differently. Um, you can digitize around like that, or you can do some shortcuts. So I just picked the closed path, and I'm going to put a point down, and I'm going to go up to shape. And this is pretty small. It was 4 by 4 so I would probably do four ellipse, four elements. And we're going to pull it out, and we're going to right-click two elements, and then generate the stitches and we're going to put that over that part and make it a little bit smaller and that's good enough for this i could fiddle around with it but not gonna so let's duplicate that right down here and that was a right click to get the duplicate there we go and then we need to do this bottom part so we can do basically the same thing put down your node go to shape we want a rectangle Let's see if we can I uh, placed the node wrong but okay that's how you would do it let's uh, move it around I guess well let's just manually do it because I didn't do that very well however I mean that's fine so let's just go here here this was much easier for me to show and don't worry about anything else right now so let's generate all right so now you have three pieces um, and if you look in the 3d they're all not going to show up because guess what I forgot to do generate generate and let's go to 3d so you can see our bones here and this one kind of looks awful but what we can do is merge the shapes so I'm clicking on one to select it and I'm shift clicking on the second one and then we're gonna go to um, transform and here to shaping and we're gonna go union and that's going to make it into one except for it didn't do it yes what am I thinking it did do it you just have to you see down here I was looking at the wrong thing down here 
it did it. Up here, we have the same thing, so you have to highlight those, and then you have to go delete, and then you can see it did one shape. So then we're going to take that shape, and we're going to group it, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go there, and we're going to go shaping and union. And look, nothing happened, but we got to get rid of our square so we can see what happened. So that's how I do it. There you go. And I missed a little bit that needed to be pulled up. But that's okay. This is just to show you guys what we're doing here. So let's generate the stitches. Let's go up here to generate the stitches. Yeah, see, I missed a little bit in there. I should I wasn't paying attention, pulled it up there. But for now, that's okay. So now we've basically made the same shape. Now you need to pull the circles down a little bit and do it a little bit better than I did. But you get the general idea. So let's go back to normal. Now you can see over here on the right what we have going on. And there's a better way of showing you. You can go to view and you can click here. Uh, the short keyboard shortcut is Alt J and you can see what we have going on. Now these dotted lines here are your jump stitches. So this is how this guy would stitch out. It's gonna stitch up here on the right, the beige yellow and here, 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 what a mess. Okay, so let's organize it a little bit, okay? I'm going to leave the jump stitches on so you can see what we're doing here. So I want it to start here, which is the last one with the boo-boo in it that I did. So let's move him, right-click, hold. See, you, you see um, over here on the right, my cursor has a little paper under it, square. So insert before. All right, and it just didn't generate but that's okay then I want it wait this one was supposed to be white that was my other problem there we go now that's better can we separate I see what I've done it's always fixable right guys always fixable so let's delete that there we go now we got it there's still a boo-boo in it but that's okay I forgot to delete the parts that it merged, which, um, you know, everyone does that and it gets a little confusing, but it's easy to sort out. So I want it to start on this white. And then if I leave it like this, you color change, color change, color change. So you're making way more color changes than you need to. So let's organize it. So I want it to do the second white part next. So then I put white thread in and then I will be changing it to the yellow or beige or whatever it is. So it doesn't matter which one we start off with. What have we got here? Top and then bottom. Okay, so we have this so far. This is looking good over here. We're stitching all the white and then we're stitching all the yellow. And except for one thing, it's gonna stitch here and we're gonna have, look at the jump stitch from here to here. That's gonna be a long jump stitch. and We need to fix that. So what we need to do is make connections. Now you can see by where this starts and there's, it's really hard to see. I wish they'd make them bigger, but this is the end point going to the start point here. So you can see by the jump stitch. So what we need to do first thing, cause we don't want this jump stitch going way over here. The first thing we need to do is change our stop, start and stop points. So we want to go into node mode and that's over on the left, the second icon down, and we click on that and we can see all of our nodes and now we can see what's going on. So I would like it to be, cause we're gonna move everyone. So I want it to start right there. So I'm going to right click and look at all these things you have down here. I want it to start there and then right click and I want it to place fill endpoint here. So that's gonna change. It's starting here and it's ending here. So let's generate that and look, our jump stitch moved. Okay, so let's do this one. Let's just do it again. Let's go into node mode and I want it to go right here because we're trying to pick the closest points. So place start point here and let's just do the end point here. Place end point here. And nothing changed because we haven't generated yet. So there we go. Now we have our stitch going on here and it's the shortest dis distance. And you know, you could probably leave it like that because we are going to embroider over, um, over it and it'd be okay. 
but we want to make a connection out of it. So what we're going to do, there's, there's two ways of doing it. The first way is using this create connection up top here. And it does a pretty good job most of the time but it goes from the shortest point to the shortest point. So again, this might be okay in here uh, because we are stitching over it so you can hide it. You don't have to spend any time, but I'm gonna show you a second way. If, if the manual, the automatic, sorry, create connection doesn't work, then there's a second option. And I use this a lot and I, I think it works a lot better. So let's just get rid of that. You can see it nicely highlighted here. So it went from the end point of our first one to the start point of the second one. And that is a connection and it's a run stitch. So it's no longer a jump stitch, it's a run stitch. So that's actually stitching in. And it may or may not show, um, I try not to cut through the middle. Sometimes you have to. And if you were covering, say, we're doing this in white and you were covering this in, in you know, a similar color or darker, it probably won't show. But let's, let's fix it anyway. So let's right click and I guess we might as well just delete it. And I'm going to show you how to manually do it. So we've, we know where our start and our end points do. And these jump stitches here that we're now showing gives you a good in indication. But that's the first thing you do. Set your start and end points. And what I would do is go over here on the left and pick up your line tool. And what we're going to do is just click right on the exact spot. And we're going to do this. And this is definitely going to hide it because this is going to be satin stitches. And I think this is much neater. Way too many nodes. Don't do that many nodes. And we're going to place it right on the bottom there and we're going to generate. Now, that's great, except, again, with our optimizing, it's in the wrong spot. Right now, it's going to stitch white jump stitch. You can see our jump stitch is still there and that's not what we want. And then the two yellow ones. So we have to take this, right click and hold, and we're gonna put it right here, release, and do insert before. So now our jump stitch is gone. You can see that it's gone. And it's going to stitch all this, and then it's gonna do a quick run over, and then it's gonna stitch all this. So no jump stitches, there's no stitches crossing and that'll be covered up with the thick satin stitch or whatever kind of stitch. You must make sure you cover it up because that looks terrible. So let's try that all over again with our yellow pieces. And you can see we have a lot of jump stitches going on here. So one right across. So we could create the connection, pick the second one, create connection, and it goes right across again. So same sort of thing. But let's undo that. Control Z to undo. Let's do it manually. So we can see that our start and stop points, but let's check them anyways. So yes, I started it there and I ended it there, so we're fine. And this one, I did the same thing. So, I mean, that's fine. Check them. We're good. We're good on that. So I'm just going to exit out of that. This is the same thing. Now I'm going to try to zoom in so you can see it. It's really hard to see, but it tells you here, green, and this one is even harder to see, but they have little little itty bitty nodes that tells you what you're doing. I always check anyways, because I can't really see them, and I find it kind of annoying. So we want to pick the shortest distance, so you could either start on the side that it's going on, or start and stops. I wouldn't change it just because they're okay right now. And let's go to our line, and let's go and again, I used way too many points last time. I guess I'm just happy about my mouse. Now, it doesn't really matter if these two lines overlap because, again, we're going to be covering them all up. And we're going to slide that and make sure it covers over. And we're going to generate. And this is white, so we want it the same color. And again, it's in the wrong spot, so we're going to right-click and we're going to go and we're going to do insert before, except for I picked the wrong one. So let's try that again. Now insert before, I just kind of missed it. So now we have all of our colors optimized and it's going to stitch out the first bone part and it's going to make a nice connection. So no jumps, there's no jump stitches and it's going to 
do our second one. So by the time your design gets stitched out, you don't have to go back and do any trimming. So the goal of your embroidery is to reduce as many jump stitches as possible. You still may have jump stitches, but you won't have as many. So either use the connection button up top, um, right there, if that's gonna work for you, if you can cover it up, or you create manual conne connections. Like I said, when I digitize, I have all this in my mind thinking. So I would digitize this, I do the run stitch, walk my way over, I call it walking. So I walk my way over to the next one, do that, change colors, do this, walk over to the next one. And you just have to switch in between your tools. But then by the time I'm done, I sometimes have to do a little bit of reorganization of the colors, but I don't have to do a whole lot. A lot of people don't digitize that way. They just do, you know, the behind stuff and then the forward stuff and then organize it. But you need to make sure your connections are there and you need to make sure they are in the right spot. So everyone's saying, okay, that looks terrible. Look at that. Well, we're going to fill this in and I'm just going to do it super quickly again. So you can see they are going to be covered up and it's a nice thick satin stitch over top and you're really not going to see them. Only you're going to know because you don't have to do as much trimming. And that's what I would call a fully optimized design. Just in the parts that we have first, it's fully optimized and it'll stitch out really nicely. So we'll do that in yellow or maybe um, a darker gray or something. I guess it doesn't matter. Skulls aren't always that color. Oh, look, it shows. But we're going to go to... Um, convert and we're going to do create outline from fill because I do want this guy outline. I don't think I want it that thick. So let's uh, change the color to black and see we have it separately here. Let's right click go into parameters and change that to a satin stitch. Let's apply and see how it looks. See these are really thick. You can see that. So let's make take the width up a little bit. You don't want it too much. Let's try that. That's, that's a little bit better. And what I'm gonna do, it doesn't quite cover everything. It's almost, generate stitches. It almost does, but not quite. So to compensate for that, because I really don't wanna make my satin stitches any thicker, I'm gonna make the skull part um, a little bit bigger. So what looks good on vectors doesn't necessarily translate into embroidery. That's another point I'd like to make. Just because it's in a vector doesn't mean you can do it and look good in embroidery. Um, I would actually, this is so thick, I would actually do this in a fill stitch um, or do what I'm doing, making it, you know, smaller. So let's um, generate that. Oops, I didn't bring the outline with it. Do you see what I did there? I'm trying, I try, I try to make mistakes to show you because people will get to this point and get very confused. Okay, well, I made it bigger. But what happened? It's not there anymore. Well, it is, but we didn't move it and we didn't generate. So let's try generating and see where we're at. You always have to take, I did move them both. You, you, you always have to take everything one step at a time to do stuff like this and try not to get confused. It's all easily solved. So there we go. Let's take a look at it now. See, now you can't even, that kind of looks weird without a face, but you can't even see the stitches. You can't even see where they're going. You can't even see anything. I really, just for the record, I really do not like this that thick, but you get the point anyways. Um, long satin stitches are, like big fat ones, are just not the greatest idea. It's probably okay, but I just don't like it. So let's watch this guy stitch out. Now, before we do that, are we optimized? We've got a color, we got a connection, we got a color, new color, connection, and then we have the gray. Why don't we make it black so we look really, really optimized? Okay, I think that looks good. Check it in 3D, look good. Let's check it in the density map. Yeah, well, obviously this is, you know what this is caused from, and it's okay. It, this is just to give you a general idea. If you had like four layers on it and it's all red, I wouldn't be stitching it out. But this, you see a little bit, and on lettering, remember lettering 
is going to always be a little more dense than you think. The rest of it is great, nicely balanced, so we're good. So let's go to our stitch simulator, and we're not going to watch the whole thing. Let's speed it up a little bit, and you'll see, actually, let's stop, because, oops, I didn't mean stop. Let's go here. Let's pause, and we over here, it, you can do different things if you can't see what you're doing. Um, you can have it pause on a jump stitch between objects. So if, if you want to check for jump stitches, that's exactly what you do. This one is pause on jump stitch inside object, pause on color change, and this one is pause on backward path, which we don't have any, we'll go through. Pause on connection, and pause on shade change. So that's on Somato, that doesn't apply to us. So we can we can even look at it in 3d why don't we do that so it's going to stitch out the underlay i guess i could have taken that off to make it look better but you need underlay just depends on how much you need and you can see how it stitches out if you move your start and stop points you can see that it will uh, stitch out differently each time should we make that a little faster i'm only going to show you the first one so it should be okay and it's gonna, I picked the one that I made a boo-boo on, but that's okay. We get the idea anyways. Okay, so now it's gonna finish in the corner where we thought, and it's gonna go zoom all the way over. So no jumps, no nothing, straight into the next one. You don't have to trim it, you don't have to do anything, you just have to hide it. And that is how you optimize your design. So that's awesome for this one. Let's go back to normal view. But let's bring in something, I mean, it's easier, it's easy to do when you're starting on something to remember to do it. But what if you finish the design and you want to uh, optimize it, which you always want to do if you're stitching it out. And I think most people, if you're creating stuff, you're stitching it. Um, let's go to the, the design we did last week because I put up a note and I said, make sure you optimize your design. For that one, it, there was a lot of digitizing involved and I didn't think anyone really needed to watch me optimize it, um, just move stuff around. But now that we're getting more into more detail with it, we're gonna work on it. So, okay, let's get rid of the image because we don't need it anymore. So I just clicked on image and we go to delete image. Now we can see what's going on here. Now, if you look here to the right, you can see what a mess I have. How many thread changes would that be? And they're not necessary. I was just going through the motions and I changed my mind at the end and I added outlines and stuff like that, which is perfectly fine. Hopefully you guys get ideas as you're digitizing and you do the same thing. But now we need to optimize it because I am really not going to do all these stitches. So we need to kind of group it. If you can't, for example, and we're working here over on the right, if you don't know what this little icon is, you just click it or unclick it. Okay, so that's the bottom of the B. Okay, so we did the white and we did the white and we started off with the red. Um, so why don't we move a couple of the other reds up here. So right click, insert after. This one is fine. So right click, insert after. And what I'm looking for is that some things are done in layers and you have to keep them in the same order. That's why you can't just have you know, red, white, yellow, it doesn't always work that way because some things have to stitch out beforehand. It happens to be on this one that, you know, we cut out the heart and we did it like that. So it's fine. So let's do all the red and let's, we can throw this guy in too. So right click, drag, insert after, and then we're going to do the white and then there's a black. So the black B um, and I don't think it matters what order it's in. And if you're not sure, you know what? It's just a click and we're going to check insert before. Does it look any different? No, because we did everything. We cut everything out. So it doesn't make any difference. So let's move this yellow down, insert before. And let's move this yellow up. And that's going to be an insert before. And we need to take this orange and we're going to insert after. 
So now we have it a little bit better and these are all the blacks. I like to do my outlines at the end. I always throw them at the end and you can do a quick move to end and because they always are going to stitch out last. So it's a no brainer if you have outlines, um, if you can possibly have it nicely the way we do here, that's great. I almost forgot to move one, insert after. So I don't think, see now that kind of does we need the yellow, we need the black. So if I was to move everything up to where that other black one is, it wouldn't work out because it would stitch the eyes, nose, and the mouth, and then stitch the yellow over top it because we didn't cut those out because they're getting kind of small. So that's what you need to watch for when you're optimizing. And you can, of course, always switch back into your 3D and make sure nothing got moved, make sure the eyes are still there. It's just a quick click and a quick view. Okay, so now I've optimized that, and that would be much better, because now we only have red, white, orange, yellow, and black to change. And everything looks fine. I don't think I missed anything. All my outlines are stitching out last, and that's what we want, and that looks great. So let's take a look at this with jump stitches, because I always have them off because I find them irritating. Ah, wow, that's a lot of jump stitches. Wow. So that would, if you stitched it out just like this without making any connections, then what a mess that would be. You would be cutting jumps. It goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So we need to streamline this a little bit. So let's start with the reds. Uh, I'm gonna leave these jump stitches on so we can see. So if it's gonna stitch out a heart, and then this and this, this is where all the jump stitches are coming from. So if you look at it and you just see the red parts, what would be the most logical way to do the shortest stitches? And red is stitching out first, so we can really do this. I think it's going to go this way and up and around. Now, there's not going to be much we can do about that one. That one might be a little bit big uh, because there's nothing around it. There's no place to hide it. So we're going to have to tolerate this one jump stitch. So let's start now I clicked on it and I can see over here that this is this one and I'm going to move it up insert before and so this guy is starting first and that's what we want. Now we can see the start and end points are right in there so we need to go into node mode. Yeah it's right there and we want it to be say this on this node. So right click place start point here right click place end point here and you don't have to do both I just am just to show you okay so that moved that so now we know it's right there so the second one we want to stitch is, is the heart and it happens to be the heart so let's check its start and end points and I want it to be right here are you, are you kind of getting what I'm doing here so plus place start point click on it why am I not clicking on it Maybe I should move in so I can see. Oh, because I'm selecting the wrong one. Hua, uh, we want the heart. See how easily you can do that if you're not paying attention? I clicked on it and I clicked the outline and wondered why it wouldn't work. Okay, well, that's why. We want the heart, not the outline. Now that we have it selected and we double check over here, we do have the right one. Now let's go into node mode and do it like that. So now it's available. See, that's how I realized I made a mistake because it's an automatic outline and it's you don't really connect it to much at the moment. So let's place the start point here. So now we have this heart and we have this heart starting, let's generate that first, at this point, ending and starting at this point. Now we could do the automatic connection, but can you see it's gonna go right here, right straight across to it and it's gonna show. And we don't want that, we don't want it to show. So what I'm gonna do is a manual connection and because it's stitching out first, I'm gonna tuck it up underneath the black and then it's gonna go right here. So that's what I'm gonna do right now because I remember my points we want there. And we want it, you can see it right here. So we're going to go up a little bit, over, and right here. And we're going to generate. Yay, we can see it. It's great. And it's black. We don't want that. We want the same color red. And then we've got to move it into the right spot, which is in between the two hearts. So insert after. So now let's check one heart, 
connection, second heart, no jump stitch. So that's going to stitch this heart and it's I've matched up the lines and there and then it's going to do this one. So now what are we going to do here? We there is going to be a jump stitch. There's you don't really want to run stitch here because then you'd have to pick it out. But right now the start and end points are, you know, far apart. I guess it's right here. We can let's move it. So let's click on the second heart. Make sure you have the right one. Node mode here and we want to find ourselves a nice node that's close enough we could do this one you know sometimes the bigger jump stitches are a little bit better but this one's a bit closer so what can we do place fill end point here and let's generate so the jump stitch is going to go from a bit shorter of a distance. Not much you can do about it. And sometimes it is a little bit better to make it a little bit longer because it's easy to trim. Now the problem I have is that I didn't have this in the right order. So we want it after the heart. So insert before. How about we insert here before I keep clipping, clicking on the wrong spot. So now we've got heart connection heart and then that and so you can see where the jump stitch is and we don't want it to cross over because that's going to be a mess so now we need to go into that heart and we need to go to the nodes and we want to click on this node to highlight it and we're going to right click and we're going to put the start point there so once we generate it see there's only a little jump stitch so that's about all we can do for that one and because there's no place to hide it there's nothing you can do about it um i guess you could get really clever and figure it out but we don't want to spend forever on it either so the next thing what we can do right now you can see it goes from heart to heart and we don't want that what we want is the word so we want the little heart and we want the words now there's no connection and the words are all in one so we need to ungroup the words and it kind of makes a bit of a mess there but that's okay so we, we're just concerned about this part so we want this to connect here and there's again going to be a little jump stitch I don't know if it's worth it for for that um, I would tend to do it because it still looks neater and it still makes your machine run neater so you know what we're not that far off i probably wouldn't bother but we're here anyways so let's do it we're gonna have to move the heart end point over but let's just do what we're doing here um you know what just leave it i would just leave it let's move the heart one though so uh let's go into node mode and this is what you can do so we'll place it Let's zoom in a bit. It's hard to see my nodes because it's black and it kind of looks furry. So closer. Let's do it closer. That's probably that's probably the best way of doing it. And I'm having trouble picking up a node, but I got it. So we want the end point here. And once we generate, that's going to do. See the little jump stitch we have there? Because this is where... Uh, it starts off it starts off with the underlay and that's going to be pretty good that one isn't that bad and you can see that because when we did our lettering that it has it automatically joined here that's a run stitch that's a jump stitch and that's okay though that's normal for lettering there's a little more space we i always pick you know to do the clearest uh the closest node and the same thing here i'm, I'm not going to show you on this heart um all we need to do is change the start and end point so it's just a shorter um, jump stitch uh, there's not much again you can do about it but let's let's play around with the middle of the B so let's move down here I guess you can regroup your lettering too that might be a little bit better but we're gonna leave that right now so how can we do this in the order we have it stitched out this orange and we have this orange stitching out and it's hard to see because of the coloring because it's the exact same coloring but we've got runs jump stitches back and forth so let's do this one i highlighted it the first one i checked on it let's go into node mode and we want the shortest distance between the two right now that's way over here so we don't we don't want that so we want the end point there and that should do 
and then we want this one we'll go into node mode again and this is the start point so that's probably pretty good so then generate so then what we can do pick on the second one and look it's highlighted make our connection and now it's made a connection but again it's it's in place and the black is going to cover everything over so we're good on that one so now we have orange and we have connection and because we changed the start and stop points we have a nice connection through there and that's fine the yellow will stitch over it depending on what color orange you use of course um you get used to the colors and what covers up but that's fine so one last jump stitch thank you that's awesome and this one i think we should get a little creative we did that one the fast way let's do this one a little creatively so i have it highlighted let's go here and so yes let's place the end point here and then generate and then we're going to go into this one and we are going to do the same thing again there's a lot of a lot of nodes going on here and we have it starting here so maybe this one we can do because that's a nice short that's a nice short distance in between or we could do here depending on which way you're going to do it so we want this one to start here so end start now generate and that'll change our jump stitch right there so we're going from the head to there so we click on this one we can make our connection and it puts it in the right spot now if you don't want that going through the orange or the yellow sorry let's let's try it the manual way if you think that's going to be a problem let's do it the manual way so i deleted that except for i didn't delete this is why i never do it delete now i've deleted that and we're going to go here and you can see again it's really hard to see green green line here for go um, you should probably zoom in a little bit to see everything but let's make our manual point and we're going to start there and remember the black is stitching over top so if we want to really neaten this so it's not going through the orange that's basically what we're doing i think i made it up there though but that's okay generate and then of course you have to move it into the right spot because that will do no good and it's the wrong color too so we want it this vibrant yellow and that matches so right click hold this is the face so we can do insert after and then we have our connection and there we go and so that's a little bit neater of a way to do it and we've reduced quite a few of the jump stitches I think the black I didn't go in and optimize the black but you can see the black body ends or it does a one eye then it does the body and then it does another eye so we need to at least put the eyes together if you don't want to make connections at least put the eyes together and so that eliminates this great big huge jump so when you're doing your optimization you want it to be by color but also within the color because you have to optimize like now we have an eye we have a little jump stitch and there's nothing you can do about that one because this is all stitching on the top then we want the nose because that's the closest so we're going to right click and we're going to go after and then we want the smile and again there's going to be jump stitches that you're going to have to trim because there's nothing you can do about that and there we go and that looks even better there are a few jump stitches and then you know the body so whatever order you think is best what does it do next the antennae and those should be beside each other and then it's going to do all the outlining and you can combine all this outlining into one but you are going to have jump stitches because look how far it has to go put it in the right order but if you have it the way it is now it does one heart outline and then all the way over so you are going to have a jump stitch um so you can optimize all of your outlines uh, Embert can do it for you or you can keep practicing and do it yourself so that's one that's one and then I would do the big heart next and you have to change your start and stop points you can see that green one pretty well today so you have to move them around again and then a little bit more and a little bit more so you can get it in a smooth movement so I would probably do this one and then this one and then over um, 
So that is optimization. Hopefully that cleared up the connections and I hope to see people making good connections and saving time on your embroidery and making everything neat and clean because again who wants to, to change threads 150 times i don't that's for sure so once you get everything optimized make sure you save and send it to your machine once you and of course once you optimize everything please check your 3d to make sure we didn't move anything out of order because if we moved you know these lines to stitch out first, it's not gonna look the same. So double check on that, um, check your density. That should be all the same for us. Now these are a bit thick, but that's okay. We know what it is, it's an underline and it's going over both of them to make it look really good. And do your stitch simulator and then save it, compile it and send it to your machine and you'll have much, much happier stitch outs. Anyways, thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I think everybody can learn from this and I hope you guys are making great connections and making even better embroidery designs. Thank you and we'll see you in the next class.